everybody welcome to project not slow i'm a huge well both daniel and i are huge fans of turbo diesel mercedes engines unfortunately mercedes never built a beautiful sports car like this sl380 with the diesel um they all had just gasoline powered engines they were good at their time but now after like basically 40 years those gasoline engines have pretty much expired for the most part with a lot of different issues difficult to source parts for them and keep uh, keep them running but the diesels on the other hand are still running so well and now people have learned how to make them faster and more powerful than ever so we've decided to build a diesel sports car mercedes couldn't so we're going to put an inline six turbo diesel engine into this beautiful sl so this sl has a beautiful interior i love the sporty gauges somebody put this wooden steering wheel in here what i really love about it is the hard top removes and there's a convertible part inside that still if you take off the hard top and you go for a road trip somewhere starts raining or you get tired of the sun just put that cover on and then you're you're good to go which is really nice for a car made in 1984. so we are going to use a turbo om603 the reason i think not too many people know or use these is because most of the information comes from europe about these uh, diesel mercedes engines and the 606 and in Europe, it seems like there are not many turbo OM 603s. So not many people use them. So you can't really get the word out. In US, 603s, pretty much, they're all turbo. Um, they're, it's extremely rare to find a non-turbo. I, I think it was imported or something if it was non-turbo. But anyways, the turbo 603, back in the day when I was just getting into them, um, the turbo 603, people online were saying that a 606, Turbo 606 can take about 600 horsepower with stock stock internals, and a 603 can take about 400 uh, with stock internals, which is I found to be correct, <laughs> which I found to be true. It can the the, the turbo 603 can easily take uh, 400 horsepower um, with completely stock internals. I actually have good success with the with the normal 603 composite head gasket. Um, but on a very high mileage engine, probably over 400,000 mile engine. Um, it actually took 40 PSI, surprisingly. But when my brother Daniel got a 603, he kept blowing head gaskets. And um, yeah, anyway, so, so the, the upper hand in the 606 is that the head gasket is a metal layered gasket. Uh, versus uh, composite gasket in a 603. But now we're learning that a 606 gasket can go into a 603. So that might be changing the game. Uh, one thing that I really like about the 603 also, or maybe the 603 has the upper hand over the OM606, is that when you pull it out of a donor car, it's a finished package. There is the pump that you need to make a 606 run in any car is on this engine. It comes with it. And then the turbo is routed directly into the intake so you pretty much just take it out put it in no intercooler piping um, you just need to run power to the glow plugs power to the starter fuel to the pump and the car and the engine's ready to run you could pretty much just take it out of the donor car put it into anything and it factory has 148 horsepower and if you don't need much more than that you're pretty much done um, these engines in my area there's two at the junkyard and nobody's really taking them. People took the injection pump off, but the rest of the engine is still there. So they're, they're not nearly as expensive or as rare as the Turbo 606s because they came in 300 SDLs and they came in um, 124s and then- uh, G-Wagons. And later on, they had these in the 140s, but in the 3.5, which you could use the crane for it to create a, to build a stroker motor most most of the ohm 603s also probably get a bad rep because of the cylinder heads tend to crack uh the number 14 heads are considered the weakest um i'm not too worried about them because there are thousands of ohm 603s still on the road right now with over two three hundred thousand miles that have the factory sealed number 14 heads the reason they crack is because people overheat them and they crack. They crack basically once, you overheat them once and they crack. It's kind of guaranteed you overheat it, it cracks. But otherwise, if you don't overheat it, it's a great engine. Another thing to note that I only just 
uh, realized the other day is this engine is out of a W1, no, yeah, W124. And people comment to us telling us to put smaller pulleys on the water pump. And I'm like, well, I've never had an overheating issues out of eight years of daily driving many different uh, cars with 603s, like multiple SDLs, multiple 140s, and none of them ever had overheating issues. What I always did was put in, put electric fans on and overheating wasn't even a thing anymore. You didn't, you just stopped watching the gauges now. Um, and one thing that I just noticed is that the, the, the 126, 603, has a smaller pulley already. So here's a water pulley from a, one, uh, from a 126 compared to the 124 water pump pulley. Much smaller. Much smaller. This is the factory pulley too. Um, and I did not know that until just the other day. Since all my experience was with the 126s and 140s. I have worked on a few uh, 124s, just uh, 603s, fixing them. But I've never noticed that the water pump pulley is bigger. So I guess uh, a pulley from a 126 um, and uh, 126, basically like a 300 SDL or even a 140 will be... Uh, will be basically a factory swap in the belt from a 300 SDL and basically you get a smaller pulley. So the smaller pulley would spin the uh, water pump faster and just flow more water keeping the engine cooler. As for the transmission, dang. So since this sports car is getting a nice inline six turbo engine, might as well meet it up with a nice six speed manual transmission. This is a C230 compressor transmission that mounts right up to the 603 and 606's with just a different type of flywheel and clutch setup. This is a SOCH, SOCH performance, C-A-C-H-S performance clutch and flywheel setup that bolts right up to the 603, some slight modification to the crank, and it works flawlessly. We've had it on our drag car for a little bit and it worked awesome. Held even with 50 pounds of boost with the flying down at eight, like 80 miles an hour, held great so definitely should hold but to be fair the race car doesn't weigh anything yeah it doesn't weigh anything <laughs> i mean what a lot less horsepower and a little bit heavier car still should do it time. should be an awesome setup yes. i'm excited for it myself I, I, I actually am excited for it too but other than that this transition has has been working great so definitely going to be a nice setup for this car so it sat in a corner of a shop for seven years and let's see if this thing will start up are you ready to Fire it up. And start cranking. Start cranking to prime the fuel. I don't know when the last time this thing has cranked over, but. Ooh, compression, huh? Do you want to start? Maybe just the. How many warm up the glow plugs then? I warm up the glow plugs. Got the. Got the wires set up. I think that's enough. So hit the key. Do you, want, do you want to get a bit of throttle? Oh, I'll start if you do glove right now. Oh, something sparked back there. Did you connect to the right one? I saw something spark way in here. Yeah, something sparked up here. Something. Oh, the glow plug is broken. Oh, oh, and it touched the uh, it's ground. Really broken off glow plug. I guess we don't have glow plug number cylinder yeah, number one. It's like broken off glow plug. Uh, okay, so we took out the no brand glow plugs and put in some Bosch glow plugs that actually work. Those are completely toast. Every single glow plug was not working. So let's see what is it. warm them up real quick. It's summertime. It's like a hundred degrees. So three seconds. It should fire up right now. Ooh, almost. Okay. Do glow plugs one more time. Yeah. That's what we only replaced four though. Yeah. The easy ones. <laughs> so four plugs re uh, replaced, and then also was trying to burn that all that fuel that way inside. Hold it. Okay, I'll do glow plugs one more time. 
the time. Yeah, I mean, I guess a little bit of smoke, it just hasn't ran in a very long time, many, many years, so. It's been sitting like this for many, many years. Yeah. Not even inside of a car, just sitting inside of a carnival shop. So now we're just gonna put the, what, the transmission together. I guess, yeah, it's left so the transmission on. Put the transmission together and put it in the car. Yeah. So now that we know that this beautiful engine runs great, um, a little bit smoky, um, it just needs to run for a little bit to uh, clear up but anyways we're going to now mount the flywheel clutch transmission and start putting it in the sl let's go so one thing you need to do in order to install the different flywheel for the manual transmission is you have to grind down about a little bit more than a millimeter off of the the crank the rear of the crank doesn't harm it in any way but it's just clearancing Now we should go on with ease. Amazing. And the engine is in just kidding i wish i was hoping it was going to be a smooth install it just bolts right in yeah. but um no we need to cut the subframe so we're going to modify the subframe so the engine can sit a lot lower it's kind of a uh, way too high so we need to cut the subframe lower the engine a little bit so put the whole thing in now we're going to take it, the whole thing back out um well it kind of makes me nervous where the turbo's landing it kind of seems like the the motor mount is right where that turbo is supposed to be. <laughs> um, so, so basically the stock exhaust manifold doesn't work. I mean, we do have a different stock exhaust manifold. It's more of the European style manifold or the um, W140. W140 in US manifold. Yeah. Uh, so, it, get, it gets rid of all of this extra stuff. All right, it's, a, it's just it's a nice T3 manifold. Anyways, let's pull the engine out, uh, chop the subframe. We got the engine transmission out. We have just an oil pan set up here to see what needs to happen, uh, measuring it to the mounts and everything. How does it look down there? Oh, greasy. <laughs> yeah, everything's really dirty. You should have probably pressure washed it before starting. Yeah. That would have been smart. I think we still can, but whatever. Um, no, some cat was here. Anyway, uh, we're thinking that we're going to probably cut here and there to lower it down about like two inches. Uh, but the front as well needs to get cut. The front cross um, already subframe. That's nice marking it up. How is it looking down here? Yeah, quite greasy, but... I think we'll just end up cutting that piece out and then just welding a flat plate across or what do you think Dennis? Yeah, just a flat plate, it's a little bit good. All right, <laughs> let's get to cutting. So I cut out the subframe a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna put the engine back in, um, see the clearance. I really hope that's more than enough. Uh, once I build the motor mounts, I'm going to weld a lot of it back in whatever um, is needed and um, yeah hopefully we can get the engine to sit 
how it's supposed to naturally so that the drive shaft just is nice and straight. Yeah, so it'd be a lot easier to make mounts and stuff. And it's still pretty concerning. I really think that this turbo is going to land directly on that mount. Yeah, uh, this mounts for some reason, these are super high up. Uh, Dennis saw the pictures of how the old engine mounts were. They were yeah. like up they go, and they over. Up, yeah, so um, it might be a big possibility we'll have to remove this and put the 140 set up on here. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. it is what it is. <laughs> Anyways, like all these big builds, you always uh, plan so much, but only get <laughs> so far with all the unforeseen things. But what we got here is, boom, turbo inline six ready. Just kidding, it's just in there. It's not even bolted down. Um, there's a lot of fabricating work left now, but the engine is pretty much in its place where we want it. It looks good to us and um, it's, it's sitting basically at the level as the original engine is, based off of where the crankshaft was. Um, yeah, everything fits pretty great. It looks pretty awesome in here. It's actually a lot more exciting now to open the hood and see this uh, OM603 over a V8. Yeah, the first time actually putting the engine in actually looked pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know if it's just like so satisfying to see these engines now that when I ever see them, it's like, whoa. <laughs> But anyways, I really want to see what a stock 603 would feel like with a six-speed manual and whatever differential that's in here. Um, I want to see what that feels like, see what it actually does. I'm I'm pretty excited. Uh, I think it'll be. I think it's going to be like pretty torquey and uh, not that much horsepower, but pretty torquey. And then we're probably going to put like a 7.5 injection pump with some nicer turbo in here and uh, probably MLS head gasket. Um, with my water to air intercooler. One thing that I really want to try to do is the gas V8s had this um, to cool the ga gasoline when uh, when the AC turns on, it would cool the gasoline. I want to try to route the water for the air intercooler uh, to cool the water when the AC turns on. I really want to try that, it's probably pretty cool. Otherwise, that's it for now. So God bless you guys, God bless America, and subscribe and hit that like button comment something anyways but there'll be a lot more in the next video you gonna say good night oh good night <laughs>